Hello, it's Michael E. Gerber speaking to you again from Carlsbad, California, Awakening the Entrepreneur Within. Every other week, we join you here on YouTube or wherever the hell we are, just to bring to you these most extraordinary, exquisite stories of people who have done the impossible. Amazing people, amazing companies, amazing results, all and every single one of them beginning from scratch in what I call a company of one to go about the seemingly impossible process of inventing a company of 1,000 and more. Today, we have an absolutely stunning guy. His name is Brian Klein, and he's the founder, the chairman, the chief executive officer of Max Challenge, the Max Challenge, which is a well-being, health, nutrition, franchise model that's growing like crazy, even as we speak. I want to have Brian tell us the story of how he set about creating this stunning company. Brian, see our guests. Thank you for joining us. Let's talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. That was amazing and it's such an incredible honor you know i've been a fan for i don't know 25 years now that's when my journey with the e-myth started i can tell you it started on a, a, a thursday somebody recommended to me the book the e-myth and i didn't hesitate this this gentleman described to me what he found within the the book the e-myth and i ran out purchased this book because of course at that time you had to run to a bookstore to get it by Friday, I was halfway through, and I'm not a fast reader. By Saturday, I was completely done, and I had gotten to the last page of that book. And right there on that last page, there was a form to fill out and to fax in. And I faxed that form in first thing Monday morning, and that's where my e journey had begun. And I could tell you that it was amazing. I love it. <laughs> it was amazing because the energy in that book made me was such a strong connection and it awoke in something in me it said there's something bigger there's something much bigger much more exciting much more fulfilling that's waiting for you at the other end of this experience and so that's how my journey with the e-myth had begun and i can tell you that my coach at the time he said to me you know you're really working diligently to master this system to learn all these tools, to systematize your business. And he said to me, I truly believe that there's something even bigger awaiting for you. He goes, I don't know what it is yet. I don't even think that you know what it is yet. He says, but there, there's something bigger waiting for you. And you know, those- now, Brian, Brian, before you go any further, I want everybody to know that when you got the e revisited way back then on that Thursday, you were in a completely different business than you are today. You had a martial arts studio. And the I had a martial told, arts studio. Yep, yes. you had a martial arts studio. And the story you told me is you had one and it was working. So you created a second one and it was working. So you created a third one and it was working. So you created a fourth one and suddenly the shit hit the fan. The shit hit the fan. <laughs> right? And when I, as I was reading the book, I was... Sarah, you know, everything that this person, Sarah, that was being described in this book, she was baking these cakes, she was washing the windows, she was, you know, and it was like a, it was like a, it, it was like a circus, you know, <laughs> over here, get this, get this plate spinning, run over here, get this plate spinning, run back over here, try to get this one going. <laughs> it was just absolute chaos. Yep, I understand. In fact, so many people who come to me over the years, and there's been thousands upon thousands, as you know of them who have come to me, they say, I am Sarah. You are talking about me. Sarah, of course, is the person in the book 
who I speak to as though I'm her coach. And we walk her through the chapters in the book as we begin to understand the seven discrete steps that must be taken in the creation of a company of one to grow it to a company of 1,000. Your primary aim, your strategic objective, your organizational strategy, your management development strategy, your people development strategy, your systems development strategy, your marketing strategy. And the book, of course, spoke about all of that, and I walked Sarah through it. So effectively, what you're describing is, my goodness, how did you know who I am and what I'm doing? Isn't that right, Brian? It's like you're jumping. It's you know, I'm reading this book, and it, it, it's like you're jumping off the page into my life and saying, "Come with me, you know, follow me. I've got the answer to all of the all of the issues that you're facing as an entrepreneur." It, it so only ask, answer the question. Yeah. So you didn't continue the martial arts business. You started a completely new company. Why was that? So I continued with the martial arts business for a period of time. And then, uh, you know, one day uh, I started to realize that, well, I had gained a lot of weight. That's essentially what had happened. My wife, I got terribly ill. I gained some weight. And as I set out on a mission to start to lose this weight, I started to realize that right around me was this incredible opportunity. Once again, the entrepreneur within me was awakening. Yeah. And the opportunity that I saw is that I saw people walking in and out of gyms day after day, week after week, month after month. They're looking the same. But yet the people operating these gyms are saying nothing to them about what they're eating. But I already knew in my mind, I already knew, I already had the experience as an athlete. I knew that it was a combination of nutrition and fitness that was going to get them to where they needed to go. Also, these people walking in and out of gyms, only if they're actually going. Most of them are paying for the gym, but they're not even going. So I saw this incredible opportunity. The entrepreneur within me was awakened once again to combine fitness classes, incredible fitness classes, with the motivation, because I knew that the best classes on the face of the earth were the ones that people actually would go to, and nutrition counseling to help people make absolutely astounding changes to their health, to their appearance, and to their fitness levels, to literally reinvent themselves from the inside out. And that business now is called The Max Challenge. I love it. And so in our context, Brian, um, you will awoke with that entrepreneurial passion, with a dream. You had a vision. You had a purpose. You had a mission. That's the conversation we use at Radical U. I have a dream, I have a vision, I have a purpose, I have a mission. Your dream was to transform the state of well-being worldwide. Your vision was that you could invent the McDonald's of nutrition and wealth training worldwide. Your purpose was that people would suddenly experience the expansion of their capabilities in their lives as their bodies, their mindset and relationship to their bodies was transformed. And your mission was to invent the system to make that happen. And so in my language, in the E-Myth language, in the Radical You language, in the Michael E. Gerber language, you went to work on this dream, vision, purpose, and mission to invent the max challenge. And you built a system that you then took out to the world. So tell me, how did you do that? What did that look like at the very beginning when you opened system one, operation one, the first place in the process? Yeah, so even before that first unit opened up, before we opened up the first center, you know, I knew because of the training that I received through the EMF, through Michael Gerber's teaching, through truly studying all of his books, I knew that I was going to start at the most important place with what Michael calls the primary aim, right? And I knew that I truly, in my heart, wanted to start a business that was driven by one thing, a purpose to make an astounding difference in the lives of the people that it served. 
And I went to work on creating the values, on creating the mission, on creating the company story that would fuel the growth in an almost magical way. Because I could tell you what it allowed me to do. It allowed me to look at every single opportunity that came my way, every single employee. So that first employee that I hired, right? I put him through the filter of the company story. I put him through the filter of our company values. I put him through the filter of my own primary aim. And I made sure that I was joining forces, literally joining forces together with like-minded people that were already on a similar mission. And that allowed us to basically build a business that was fueled, not by ordinary fuel, but I'll call it rocket fuel, right? This is like a business on steroids because the people aren't coming to work to make a widget or to push a button or to ring up a sale. These are people that are showing up because they're on a mission to make a difference in the world. And a that's mission for, a mission from God. It's a so mission from God. Effectively, you're tying true believers into um, your world to go out in the world and transform the state of the world every single step you took. We're not here to sell it. We're here to tell it. We're not here just to tell it. We're here to be it. We're not just here to be it. We're here to see it in every single person who comes through our door and to inspire them to raise the fire within them to truly take on their lives, their bodies, and every single person they connect with to bring the fire to them. So the spirit that lay within the beginning of your company was absolutely critical. You understand, I call that the dream, the vision, the purpose, and the mission. I say that the very beginning of our company, way back then in 1977, we had a dream, we had a vision, we had a purpose, and we had a mission. And that was the heart of what we set out to do. The heart of what we set out to do lives in my heart, lives in your heart, lives in your people's heart. So tell me then, as you began with your first unit, what do you call it? A studio? A store? A what center. do you call it? We, we call it a center. A center. So in your very first center, was that a franchise center or was that operated by your employees? That was operated by our employees and myself, right? We wanted to make sure that we infused the spirit, the energy, the right, you know, set it right from the start. So you were the franchisee. I was the franchisee. <laughs> I, I was it. the franchisee. And it's the only way in the world you can do it. You have to start with, you start with one and you get it right in one and then you bring it to two and then to three and then to four and then to five. And now to 77. To 77 the and the sky and is four more in the wings waiting to get started. Yes. Think about that. I want all of you to think about that. You understand nutrition? Everybody talks about nutrition. Um, you can go to Weight Watchers. You can do anything and everything to, in quotes, lose weight. But it ain't about losing weight, as Brian's talking about it. It's about something completely and distinctly different. Why don't you say what that something completely and distinctly different is, Brian? What makes us different literally than any other concept on the face of the earth. People come into us because they feel like they wanna lose a couple pounds. Maybe they wanna look better in a bathing suit this summer. That's the reason why they come in. But what they don't recognize at that point in time, but they soon discover and they come to realize is there's a much bigger benefit. They come to realize that first of all, they have the power within their own hands. They have the power within their own hearts, within their own spirit to truly make a difference, not only in their own life, not only to look better in a bathing suit, but to make a difference in the lives of all of the people around them. Because something absolutely fantastic and fabulous and almost <laughs> magical happens as they start marching down this path 
And not only are they getting the, it's transformational, Brian. It's transformational. They're yep. looking better. They're feeling better. They have more energy. They're becoming better parents, better role models. They're they're performing better at work. And then the magic happens. They begin to inspire the people around them as they achieve their goals. People are becoming inspired. And they're saying, instead of what's the name of that crazy program that you, instead of saying, what's that crazy thing you're doing now, they're saying, what's the name of that crazy thing you're doing again? Right? Because now they want to get into it. All right. Of so, course. and then they go back to the beginning and they do it again. They reinvent themselves over and over and over again. They're truly, as they're doing this and going through this process of reinventing themselves, not once, not twice, but four times a year. But Brian, you have something else there. And that something else there is a critical part of this story. And that's the system at the heart of it. In short, there's a method through which you achieve your madness. There's a method through which you attract somebody who wants to become a franchisee. There's a method through which you inspire that prospective franchisee to understand what he or she is really acquiring when they come into your business. There's a method through which you inspire them to lead, to manage, to do the work that needs to be done to operate a company called a Max Challenge Center, wherever they happen to be. So tell me, how do you invent that system? By beginning with the end in mind. And here's the most important piece of that entire thing. A business is designed for one purpose, not to take life from a franchisee or an owner, but to give that franchisee more life. So our system is designed to do three things for that franchisee. Number one, they've got to be a match. They got to be jazzed up. They've got to be totally passionate about this idea of helping to change the world one person at the time through fitness, nutrition, and motivation, because you know what? Our business for those people is a perfect match, and they're going to live a life of passion. They're going to get up in the morning and not, you know, push the snooze button. They're going to jump out of bed, fired up, ready to get to their business and do some important work. But the second piece is important too. They get to build a business that is, in, and all of our systems ladder up to producing this result. Everything that we do in this business ladders up to producing this result that I'm describing now, the passion piece, the important part of the community piece. They've got to produce something that is not, that is the opposite of void of uh, service, that is doing something absolutely incredible for their community. But then there's the last piece. And this last piece is, it must be profitable. It must provide them with everything that is on their dream list. So that combination. So in, short, in short, you don't motivate your people, you inspire your people. We inspire our people. Up. You don't jack them up. No, no they're no, inspired. You're looking they're for inside. people who are connected in the heart and in the mind with the outcome you're here to create. They're inspired to be alive in this process as they experience it every single day. But here's another piece of this puzzle, and I know you have to have this problem, and you probably, the more, the more centers you open, the more you experience it, people forget why they're doing what they're doing. In short, they become disenchanted with it because it takes so much energy to be on fire. How do you deal with that when it happens? Number one, we go back to the story. We go back to the why. Why did you get into this to begin with? And we talk deeply about that and try to help that individual really answer the question, is this truly something that you want in your life. We go back to those three Ps, the, the profit, the part of the community, and the purpose. Because without those three things, you know, sometimes somebody may be making very good money to with that seemingly very good money to one person, but to the other person, 
it's not getting them all the things on their list and they lose steam. It I got it. Good. It wasn't a good thing. Is this an opportunity worth pursuing? Right. And you we know just something, you know something, something, Brian, the extraordinary thing about all this um, is that with every interview that I have on awakening the entrepreneur within Brian Scudamore um, from 1-800-GOT-JUNK, um, Ivan Meisner from BNI and so forth. And so they, every single one of them are telling identically the same story. Now understand they all started from scratch with e -Myth. but that's not the story that is so inspiring. What's so inspiring is that each of them have created a deeply, authentically creative and moving business, a human enterprise. And so the disparity between a system, a system, a system, and people and people and creativity, most people don't get how those two things come together. Without those two things, nothing happens. With those two things, what you've just described is just an absolutely exquisite living organism. And so I am so moved when I speak to folks like you who've been touched by Emeth, moved by Emeth, taught by Emeth, trained by Emeth, inspired by Emeth, but more than that, then went out and did that themselves. So I love to say most people read my books, but some very, very exceptional people do my books. And you're one of those very exceptional people. I, I appreciate that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I could tell you if one business owner, if one person, if one of my franchisees, if one franchisee in some system just takes a moment to take a step back and to realize that it's their relationship to the system, which is told by the story of the numbers that helps us to, that's our compass to help us get on track. If one person embraces it and goes back to the book and fully studies it, it would make me the happiest person on the face <laughs> of earth. So Brian, let me ask you one question and then we're done. What is the one thing you'd like to share with everybody who's listening to us right now? Uh, every single um, wannabe small business owner, every single person who has created a company, but it isn't growing, every single person who is frustrated with the lack of results they're getting, what would you like to share with them? Most importantly, get out and get started because there's so many people, I can tell you, even right now in the position that I'm in, they come to me, they go, I had that idea. I had that idea. I had that idea. When you have an idea and you feel that entrepreneurial spirit in your heart, don't give in to that side of your brain and that side of your heart and that side of your spirit that says, who are you to think that you could actually make that idea into a reality? Instead, start paying attention to the side of your spirit and your heart that says, who are you to not put that idea and that into, into action? And then immediately go get the book, the e -Myth, go get Michael Gerber's materials, get yourself jacked up and start from the beginning with your primary aim. Start from the beginning, discovering the purpose and create a business that starts with the purpose, then plan the entire system out in a way that delivers on the promise in a magical, magical, systematic fashion to consistently and your life will change, but even more importantly, the lives of all the people whom are touched by your business will change in almost magical, almost seemingly impossible ways. Customers, disease, everything. I absolutely love it. We have to we have to go now. It's absolutely been wonderful having you tell your story. There's so much more you can share, and we're going to find the time to do that because I'd love to share your story with our students at Radical U through year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. Going down what we now call, Brian, the Eightfold Path.
And the eightfold path starts out with a dream, then goes to a vision, then goes to a purpose, then goes to a mission, then goes to the job and the client fulfillment system, then goes to the practice and the client acquisition system, and then goes to the business and the turnkey management system, and then goes to the enterprise, the turnkey leadership system. So the process, every single human being on the planet can do it, and I'm inviting every single person listening to us right now to come and to emulate exactly what Brian Klein has done in his life and now is doing it in yours. Thank you all of you for coming here to Awakening the Entrepreneur Within. We'll see you next time with another absolutely unbelievable story. And Brian, see you soon. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.